What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Okay, folks, we're back in the building. You know who this is. It's Mr. Warmack, and like I said, I'm back in the building. And today I want to focus on the social issues like welfare and Section 8. Because, number one, you have to ask yourself, do you have a backup plan? Well, you should have asked that before you went on Section 8 and welfare. You should have a backup plan for everything you do in life. You should have a roadmap of what you want to be or where you want to be. But unfortunately, in the black community, this is a negative. Because now in the black community, a lot of, I hate to say this word, fuck shit, is cool. And a lot of things that, like, the normalcy of life is now fuck shit. But on Section 8 welfare, the, the, the hustle's over. It's no more, you know, what some of you chicks do. Let me explain to you what a lot of these chicks do. And a lot of the guys are on child support will know I'm telling the truth. Say whatever happens, your wife, your girlfriend, your significant other, your side chick, whatever. She has a job. She's working crazy overtime. I mean, she's, she's, she's stacking money left and right. She, she gets pregnant. She has her child. The minute you guys fall out, two things happen. She goes to child support, and her overtime where work, where her work goes down the toilet. What they do is they go to uh, part-time. They go to part-time saying their job, their hours have been cut, and then have the balls to go back to child support and hit you up for more money because their hours have been cut. That was That's the, like, the biggest hustle they do. And no offense, that's like a weak hustle to me, but... I digress. You know, sometimes you got to work with it. But the problem is, now, a lot of these women are talking about, well, the men got to step up. What do you mean the men got to step up? Men were stepping up. M millions of guys wanted their kids, or millions of guys wanted to pay child support. The fact of the matter is, a lot of these no good chicks were on some bullshit where they had a problem with the father. So what they do is, you know how to get back to the father? Take the kid away, you know, and then they then they play the narrative. Well, he's not in his life. Well, you can't. Let me put it to you this way: Ever goes well, you don't know. It ain't that hard. You could have got your kid. Well, look, when you got the threat of the police and prison over your head, you ain't. What are you going to do? Some people say they're going to do it, but when it comes when push comes to shove, you be like, Nah, I'm good. Like well, I hope when they get when they, these kids get older, they see what what, what, the, what, the, what the positions they're put in. But the fact remains is, you get on welfare, you should have had a hustle, uh, developed a hustle. But the bad part about it lately, a lot of Americans, they're like, they're on welfare, we know this. And a lot of Americans are sick of you guys. Like I said before in the previous video, a lot of you are putting your business out on Facebook. How are you balling and you're on welfare? How are you going on vacation on welfare? And everybody goes, well, don't people deserve a vacation too? Yeah, you do deserve a vacation. But I shouldn't be the one paying for it. <laughs> you should pay for it. And how are you paying for it if you have no job? That opens you up for another investigation by somebody else. See what I'm trying to say? People are just stupid nowadays on Facebook. But you can't tell these chicks that. You want to know why? And here, here's another thing. These chicks are crying and whining now. Let me tell you something now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to a lot of females who have, and they're gonna have a problem with this. You didn't need a man then? Don't come looking for me now. You figure it out. You wanted to wear the pants in that family? You wear the pants. Whenever, whenever, whenever the ship's sailing great and, you know, the parties are going on, it's good. But the minute that ship hits that iceberg, everybody wants to panic like it's the Titanic. So, no, I'm like, look, you you, ro you ride it out. You put them big girl straps on and you put that big girl belt around your waist and you get you get to step in and you look for a job. Everybody goes, well, what about babies? You weren't babysitting anyway. You were sitting there drinking all day. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a shame to me that people are going on, now people are on Facebook begging. Well, look, you, you go beg for a job, and I can respect that. But if you're begging for me to pay for something that you don't have the money for, that's your problem. Now, I don't seem like a cold heart, but I, it's like, what's going to happen now? I'm going to tell you people. There's going to be a slight increase in crime. Because a lot of these dummies are going to try people that, like, got jobs. And I don't care where you're at, from the trailer parks to the hood to the barrio, there's going to be a slight increase in crime. That being said, 
you got to ask yourself, what do you want out of life? If you just general, what the problem was is a lot of it was generational welfare, and people see this. You go to certain places, you know that they ain't doing shit, or. Or now, if you go on Facebook, like I explained in the pictures I found, there are or there, there's these chicks there talking about I need to I need somebody to make up a, a eviction, not eviction, uh, a rental agreement. Because what they did is they lied to their apartment to get in there, and now what it is is the, the agency that they're under is asking for paperwork, and they know the paperwork's faulty because they know they're going to call the the, the the leasing the. Uh, leasing operator, and they're calling the apartment complex to make sure everything's kosher with the money. They're gonna find out they overpaid a lot of you bastards. That's gonna be the problem. So, like, like Section Eight, now it's gonna be like, hey, just people are gonna have to, you're gonna have to step up. You're gonna have to do your share. Now, do I feel sorry? I feel sorry for the people that you guys screwed over, because there's a lot of good people on welfare who really need it. But you know, they just need that. You know, they maybe got laid off. Maybe they couldn't find a job. Because, like I said. When I got laid off, I was one of the blessed ones. I got laid off, was it, uh, seven, eight years ago from a, from a pharmaceutical manufacturer, a place that makes drugs. And what happened was, I, like I said, I was one of the luckier ones. It took me no more than two to three months to find a job, but that was based on my, my work experience in my field. Like I said, I have a technical trade. I could basically go anywhere in America with my technical skills, and a lot of you, a lot of you, I tried to. And I, there's a, look, there, you think I'm just telling you folks on YouTube? I would tell my personal friends this. I have some people that let I know that don't want to do anything out of life. You know the ones, the ones that want to sit around and smoke weed and drink drink every day, or the people that only want to party, they want to lay around all day till the weekend and party and fake the game. I know this because I seen this. You, I seen and like I seen when I was younger. I seen older adults that did this, and all they did was they're drunks all day. They laid around, and I said to myself, "I don't want to be like that. I want something different out of life." So what I did is I had a plan, and like I said, like me and my brothers, uh, we were cool because our parents told they taught us how to survive. Like I said, we came up under the Carter Reagan administrations. That that well, that was hell on earth. We came up under when all the meals back home were clothing. And when 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 unemployment was high, and when the long ass lines like for cheese and butter and all that, yeah, I, we were under all that. And I said to myself, I'll never never be put in that position again. So what did I have to do when I got I got I've been laid off two times, two or three times. What did I do? Well, I'm, I'm, I had to move. I had to go where the jobs were. Did I like it? No, I didn't like moving. I was gonna miss my friends or family. But I have to go where the money is. And at the end of the day, there's certain bills I have to pay, and there's one bill in particular that can get you arrested that I have to pay. And I, I try to work it out, but you know how that goes. Part-time, jack your bill up. Eh, what is what it is. But the fact of the matter remains, you should have a program. The Section 8 free ride's over. A lot of you chicks are living out there in the suburbs, and there are people living in the cities who are working or pissed off because they're like, how come I'm living in Shantytown and some, some, some broad is living out there in the suburbs on Section 8? When I told you people that like they were cutting Section 8, you didn't want to listen. Now you're shaking in your boots because you know, you know what's going to happen. You're coming back to the cities. You, you're going back where you go. So, and now this makes it another thing for the young, these young guys. They had no social skills, so now they're going to put pressure on these younger guys, and that's where your that's where your crime spike's going to come because what skills do they have outside of, outside of suckling their mother's teeth all day, outside of being their mom's baby all day, laying around eating cereal all day? What set, what, what what skill, what set of work skills do you do you have that you can be counted on? If the answer is none, you guessed correct. And a lot of these, a lot of older guys are mad because that was a head to lay at. You knew you could have, you had a place to stay as long as you took care of her a little, you know, utilities once in a while. You know, you told her you loved her. You know, you kissed all eight of her kids, the seven guys, and all that. You knew you had a place to hang your head. Papa was a Rolling Stone, and that's why a lot of guys don't want section over. Me personally, I don't want it to end unless. People are, are just completely abusing the system. If you're abusing the system, you need kicked off. But if it's if it's, if there's welfare in Section Eight or used for its intended purpose, I'm all for it. I'm all for it for people having a crutch. 
I'm not for people using it as a wheelchair and they can walk. You know what I mean? It's something like that. It's like it's like you're using a wheelchair, but yet you can. You're just too lazy to walk, or or you got a handicap parking sticker on your car or truck, and you're just using that because, you know, you're too lazy to park in the back and walk to the front. To me, it's just it's just it's a shame that uh, a lot of people are gonna have to pay for this, and like I said, a lot a lot of people are paying for a bunch of weak ass scammers and hustlers. That's all it is. Section eight and welfare. Is a broke person's game. It is. It's a broke hustle, and it always will be a broke hustle. And a lot of you game the system. Well, look, it's time to show and prove you lot Well, right now we can say you crapped out. So, okay, have a good one. Peace.